to former President Rodrigo Duterte, who has signified his intention to appear before the Quad Committee. Get well soon. Sana po makapunta kayo sa susunod na hearing. Sana po samahan ka ng ibang invited personalities na nagtatago pa rin. Sana po sa pagpunta nyo rito, marami mga katanungan ang maaari po ninyong sagutin. My friend, next, Mr. Chaban, with regards to the comparative laboratory explanation of Cassandra Ong signature on sublease contract, we have uh, with us uh, the document submitted by the NBI and the the note uh, given to us by the NBI is that uh, written by one and the same person, Mr. Chairman. And just first and foremost, there is no an authority coming from the former president that uh, he will be represented by Attorney Martin V. De Larga. At uh, ganyan din po, gusto ko rin kailanin ang dating senador Lala Dilima at ang ating mga resource person. Mga kababayan, magandang magandang umaga po sa inyo. As we open this ninth hearing of the Quad Committee, let me begin by saying that this representation is heartened by the progress we have made. The journey has not been easy. It has been long and tedious and tiring. But though our work is far from over, we have already begun to see action as a result of the information and evidence we have gathered. Ito po ay binanggit na sa atin ng pinaka-chair po ng Quadcom na ito, si Congressman Ace Barbers. For example, together with my fellow chairs, we have filed a bill, House Bill Number 10986, that seeks to classify extrajudicial killings as heinous crimes, crimes that, if proven, will be punishable by life imprisonment or 20 to 40 years in prison. Ito po a significant step towards ensuring that those who commit such grave acts will face the full force of the law, whoever they might be. Ito po ay hakbang para di na maulit ang karumaldumal na patayan na naganap sa war on drugs, a war that unfairly and tragically claimed the lives of innocents in the name of protecting the innocent. The war on drugs po na ginawa ng dating administrasyon, wala po akong problema dyan. Ang malaking problema ko ay kung bakit kinakailangan merong mga pinatay na more than 20,000. Yan ang malaking problema ng ating bayan ngayon. We have also filed a bill, House Bill Number 10987, that seeks to prohibit all forms of offshore gaming operations in the country and provide penalties for violations thereof. Additionally, the House Squad Committee has turned over critical documents to the Office of the Solicitor General. These documents pertain to the land acquisitions and properties believed to be owned, procured, or acquired by Chinese nationals in violation of our Constitution. We have urged the OSG to move swiftly and file severe for future cases against those accused of fraudulently obtaining Philippine citizenship to illegally acquire land and operate businesses here. Our message is clear. We cannot allow foreigners to steal our land under our very noses. The law must be applied. And no one should profit from actions that undermine the integrity of our nation, especially foreigners who exploit the gaps and weaknesses in our bureaucracy. Meron ding mga LGU na kasama dito sa pagkakabenta ng mga lupang ito. Samantalang napakaraming mga kaubayan natin ang walang lupa 
at walang bahay. Pero itong mga foreigners na ito ay nagmamayari na napakalaking lupa sa iba't ibang dako sa ating bansa. It is true that the gears of the law may sometimes grind slowly. But as we have seen, when properly oiled with testimony, evidence, and the steadfast desire to obtain justice, those gears will eventually crush the guilty. Our work may be exhausting. And at the end of each hearing, we may find ourselves tired and weary. But we know it is worth it when we see our patience and perseverance rewarded with progress. We know it is worth it when we see justice being served. To the craven who continue to run and hide in order to evade the long reach of the law, or those who cannot own up to their actions and face this committee, your time will come. My friends, the Bible offers us encouragement in Galatians chapter 6, verse number 9, and I quote, And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. End of quote. This passage speaks directly to the spirit that drives the Quad Committee. It reminds us that while the path of justice is often long and arduous, it is a path worth walking. It is this commitment to a just cause that gives us the willpower and endurance to hold these marathon hearings and to slowly unearth the evidence that will be responsible for exacting accountability for years of wrongdoing. To my fellow members, to the resource persons who have come forward with the truth, and to every Filipino who yearns for a just society, let us continue to press on. We may grow tired, but we will not give up. We believe that the pursuit of justice is not only our duty, but our calling. At dahilan po sa ating Quad Committee hearings na ito, ito na po ang pinapanood ng maraming ating mga kaobayan. Ayon nga po sa sinabi sa article ng Chief Justice Art Panganiban na ito pong Quad Cob na ito ang pinaka-tele-nobela ng maraming mga kaobayan. Bakit po? Sapagkat live and real time ang ating pinag-uusapan dito. Kaya mga kaibigan, sa aking mga kasangga, maraming maraming salamat po. And may we continue to serve the cause of justice with faith in the Almighty and unwithering resolve. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much, Congressman Abante. The next to deliver his opening remarks is the Chair of the Committee of Public Order and Safety. Congressman Dan Fernandez, you are recognized. <coughs> Mr. Chairman, I will not be delivering any uh, uh, preliminary remarks uh, on this uh, uh, ninth uh, committee hearing. Thank you, Congressman uh, Fernandez, for cooperating. The next to deliver his opening remarks is Congressman uh, Karaps Paduano, the Chair of the Committee on Public Accounts. Thank you, Mr. Recommend. Chairman. As uh, practiced by this representation, I would like to submit once again my opening remarks to each without uh, discussion, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, likewise, for cooperating, Congressman Paduano. We now proceed with the next part of the agenda. Uh, Komsek, you are directed to recognize and acknowledge the presence of our honorable members and uh, uh, acknowledge as well the presence of our resource persons for today's committee hearing. Komsek. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Honorable members of this committee, ladies and gentlemen, for this ninth joint public hearing, we have with us the following members. Representative Robert Ace S. Barbers, Senior Deputy Speaker Aurelio Don Gonzalez Jr., Representative, Representative Dan S. Fernandez, Representative Joseph Stephen Caraps Paduano, Representative Bienvenido M. Abanti Jr., Deputy Speaker David J.J. J. Suarez, Representative Romeo M. Acop, Representative Arlene Brosas, Representative George Patrol Bustos, 
Representative Gerville Jinkibitrix R. Luistro, Representative Raul Daniel A. Manuel, Representative Jonathan Keith T. Flores, Representative Gloria Macapagal Arroyo, Representative Francisco Paulo P. Ortega V, Representative Johnny T. Pimentel, Representative Grace Christine Singson Mihan, Deputy Speaker, Rep Representative Jefferson Kunghun, Representative Salvador Plato, Representative Reynanto, Reynante U. Arrogancia, Representative Franz Castro, Representative Steve Chongbian Solon, Representative Ray T. Reyes, Representative Arthur, Arthur S. S. Garcia Jr., Representative Ramon Rodrigo Gutierrez, Representative Franz S. Pumaren, Representative Bonifacio L. Busita, Representative Roberto V. Puno, Representative Crispin Jigo Ping Rimulia. For our uh, resource persons, Your Honors, for our resource persons, we have from the Bureau of Immigration, we have with us uh, the Commissioner Attorney Joel Anthony M. Viado and Attorney Victor Uncad. From the Commission on Human Rights, we have the Chair, the Chairperson, Attorney Richard P. Palpalatok, Mr. Dennis de la Peña and Ms. Rachel Pilayo. From the Department of Justice, we have Assistant Prosecutor Agnes Arellano. From the National Police Commission, we have Honorable Alberto A. Bernardo, the Chairperson and the Executive Officer of Napolcom. And Director Chito Noel Bustonera and Director Edmar B. Pares. And also Attorney Nailan Ley Gandeza, uh, Ms. Jinky Rose Palabrica, all of Napolcom. From the National Bureau of Investigation, we have its Assistant Director for Investigation, Attorney Angelito Magno, Ms. Attorney Omar M. Aurelie, Attorney Dennis Victor Asistio, and Attorney Florendo Gamunak. From the Office of the Solicitor General, we have Attorney Lorelai Castro, Attorney Lenny Layug Delfin, Mr. Niel E. Lorenzo, and Mr. Ruben Aison, Jr. Senior State Prosecutor. From the Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency, we have its Director General, General Moro Virgilio Lazo, Attorney Hill T. Pabilona, Director Emeterio M. Bitong, Attorney Francis Del Valle, and Director Wardley M. Hitalia, and also Colonel Rolando Magno. From the Philippine National Police, we have with us Attorney Brigido De Jesus Dulay of their Internal Affairs, Police Brigadier General Constancio Chinayuk Jr., the Chief of PNP DPRM, Police Brigadier General Nicholas Tori III of CIDG, Police Brigadier General Elias Armata of PIDEG, Police Colonel Lito E. Patay, Police Colonel Roland, Roland A. Vilela, Police Colonel Hector Guijaldo Jr., Police Colonel Serafin Pitalio, Police Colonel and now retired Jovi Espenido, Police Lieutenant Colonel Chuck Barandog, Police Major Kenneth Paul C. Albotra, Police Major Leo Laraga, Police Corporal, Corporal Junjun Obales, Police Major Emil Garcia, Police Colonel Raycon Garduque, and um, the Chief of Police, former Chief of Police of Laguna, Ms. Uh, Police Colonel Pastor Castillo, and Police Lieutenant Colonel Brian Dexter Andulan, and also we have with us Police General Reynaldo Tamundong and Police Colonel Pablito Asmod. Now from the non-government organizations, we have with us from the Center for International Law, 
Attorney Joel Butuyan from the Free Legal Assistance Group. We have Attorney Shell Jukno from the National Union of People's Lawyers, Attorney Maria Cristina Conti from Rise Up for Life and for Rights, by, represented by its convener, Diaconis Robilin Litao, together with the families of extrajudicial killings, victims of the extrajudicial killings. We also have with us the advocates from Rise Up, Father Manuel Noel Gachalian, SVD, Diaconis Norma Doliaga, Missionary Rebecca Lawson, and Leah Valencia, its community coordinator. We also have with us the program Paghilom, led by Father Flavi L. Villanueva, SVD, the founder and president of Paghilom, together with the victims, with the families of the victims of EG case. And also from the Karapatan Alliance Philippines, we have Miss Christina E. Palabay, the Secretary, Secretary General of Karapatan. From the Bureau of Corrections, we have with us Sister Jake Harabe. And from the Leyte Sub-Provincial Jail in Baybay, Leyte, we have the jail guards on duty at the time when uh, former, the late Mayor Albuera, Mayor Espinosa was killed. They are led by its warden, Manuel Nicolas Abuda. And for other key personalities, we have with us the former Senator, Ma'am Laila De Lima, and the former Chief of Staff of uh, Cur Police Colonel Garma, Attorney Carol K. Pajera, and the journalist, Manuel Mogato. That's all for now, Mr. Chair, your honors. Thank you, Comsec. So before we proceed with the hearing proper, may we ask uh, Congressman Caraps uh, Paduano to... Yeah, may, may I know, Comsec, if uh, the resource persons invited today, especially the new ones, have taken their oath? Um, and if not, please administer the oath of the, the resource persons that we invited for today's committee hearing. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I would like to request all those uh, who attended for the first time the uh, public hearing, please stand for uh, the oath. Um, the jail guards from Bye Bye, please stand also. The jail guards from, yeah, from the provincial jail, yes. Please. Ah, okay. All right. Okay, please uh, raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in this public inquiry, so God help you? Thank you. You may now take your seats. The um, oath has been administered, sir. Thank you, Comsec. We're all, uh, also present in our committee hearing today is a former Congressman uh, Jose Christopher Kit Belmonte of the 6th District of Quezon City. Okay. Welcome to the committee hearing. Now we proceed with the uh, admin matters. Congressman Paduano. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Chairman, we have uh, received a copy of uh, letters coming from uh, the law offices of OIC, Cornell and William Moore on behalf of the Nova Parolino Garinaldo Parino Jr. requesting for TSN with regards to the affidavit uh, that was mentioned and that was submitted by Police Colonel Joby Spinedo. And uh, without any authority, authorization coming from the siblings Parolino, Mr. Chairman, we would like to, to direct the Comsec to address this uh, letter or coming from the offices of OI. Coronel and Villamor. Comsec? Next, Mr. Chairman, with regards to the comparative laboratory explanation of Cassandra Ong's signature on sublease contract, we have uh, with us uh, the document submitted by 
the NBI and the the note uh, given to us by the NBI is that uh, written by one and the same person, Mr. Chairman, just to inform the Honorable Committee. This is the findings of the NBI, NBI yeah. on the handwriting or the yeah. signature of Ms. Alice Cassandra Ong. Uh, Ms. Cassandra Ong. Yeah. And we have also received, Mr. Chairman, the uh, affidavit coming from uh, uh, Colonel, Police Colonel Paul Albotras. And uh, he's now present. He's Albot. Yes. Now we have received your affidavit. And we have received uh, uh, three uh, three complaints, Mr. Chairman, with regards to killings and red tagging coming from uh, Andrea Trinidad, sister of Ant attorney Ant Anthony Trinidad, which was killed in Yulngan City, and a uh, letter coming from Earl Jane Ralios, the daughter of Slain PDA agent, uh, baby Ralios, who was brutally killed in broad daylight by non assailants in Cebu City. And with this, Mr. Chairman, we would like to uh, take to cognizance of this letter and we'll just discuss this matter on a separate discussion, Mr. Chairman. And we also received a little complaint of Mr. Katanyag against Mr. Harry Roque with regards to uh, land dispute in Las Minas. And again, once again, Mr. Chairman, we'd just like to take uh, cognizance of this letter and we'll just discuss this on a separate uh, discussion, Mr. Chairman. Now, we also received a letter of excuse coming from General Albadeilde requesting this committee to, for him to be excused with uh, an attached medical certificate, Mr. Chairman. And uh, a letter coming from a letter addressed to uh, retired Police Major General Taas with regards to the contempt order for Cassandra Ong, and this will last until October 24th. That will be on uh, Thursday, Mr. Chairman. So we can discuss it, uh, this matter on the later part of this uh, hearing, Mr. Chairman. Comsec, please take note of this uh, letter from... Uh, from the Sergeant at Arms. Sergeant at Arms. Uh, we have also received a copy of a letter coming from Yvonne Barandog uh, requesting her to be excused in this hearing. And once again, he, she reiterated a uh, question of uh, Attached with the medical certificate, Mr. Chairman, from Cebu City Medical Center. So she's just asking to be excused yeah. for today's committee hearing. Yeah. That's noted. Comsec, please take note. And lastly, Mr. Chairman, and uh, some resource person that was invited is not present in today's hearing. And I think uh, no reply from uh, these uh, uh, personalities. From the view core, CO3, Jake Harabe. Ah, uh, you're present. Thank you. And uh, Police Colonel Madera. Comsec, did you receive any reply? Uh, sir, we have uh, a, an information that it's Police Colonel Matira, but uh, still not present. So no reply, he has not received the, uh, the invitation since the name is not correct. Uh, we um, course through the invitation to through the PNP, sir. Uh, thank you. Uh, PNP, please take note of the invitation for a certain police colonel, Matera. And of course, uh, Corporal Jeremy Kausim is the subject of our contempt order. And until now, uh, Jeremy, Corporal Jeremy Kausapin, alias Tox, cannot be found. Can we ask uh, General Tory with regards to the status of 
Jeremy kausapin. General Torre. Um, your, honor, your Honor, sir, uh, we're still uh, looking for Mr. Kausapin. Um, when we first, uh, when he was first mentioned in the Quadcom a few a few weeks back, we immediately uh, visited his house in the purpose with the purpose of securing him. However, we were met by his wife, who submitted to us, uh, signed and. Uh, signed and certified uh, resignation letter together with Sir Firearm and his uh, badge and uh, telling us that uh, his husband, her husband, is nowhere to be found already. So we're, we're conducting a manhunt for the guy, sir. Thank you, uh, General Same is true with uh, SPO4 Arthur Narsoles. For the case of uh, SPO4 Narsoles, sir, he is already retired. We have already coordinated with uh, our PRBS because he had uh, he is out of contact of the PNP considering that he have availed of the lump sum and uh, in the next few months he'll, his uh, three years lump sum will already be due and uh, he will be re uh, receiving the monthly lump sum and uh, we'll be using this also as uh, a tracer for him however right now we are also looking for him sir thank you uh, thank you General Torre. Thank you, sir. Uh, Komsek, uh, have we received a, an explanation for SPO4 Loretta Villarta Griar? Yes, sir. She sent an, a letter of excuse. I don't have a copy of that. Ah, uh, hindi ito ba? Ano ba di Caldrin? So, Mr. Chairman, I, I move that we once again invite... Uh, uh, SPO4, retired SPO4 Loretta Villarta in the next hearing, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Komsek, please, you are directed to invite the said uh, resource person in our next uh, committee hearing. Anything else, uh, Congressman uh, Paduano? Anyway, uh, we have invited on the second time Ms. Uh, Resinana Hostol former Deputy Executive Secretary for Finance and Administration, Office of the President. Uh, what's the status? Yes, Concept? sir, we have invited Ms. Hustol, but um, she's still um, not, at, uh, she's not around. She has not at, presented herself in the meeting. But uh, he, she received the invitation. Well, uh, there's no confirmation also whether he, she received the, the letter. Saan po dumaan yung invitation? Still, uh, we course through the PNP, sir. General uh, Torrid, yeah. have you any information with regards to the invitation for Ms. Uh, Rizalina Hostol? I think she is not in our list right now, sir. I have only a list of... Uh... Thanks, sir. Okay. Anyway, through the chair, through the chair, can we direct the Comsec once again to to sub, uh, invite uh, Rizalina Ustol and course through it to the to territory of the PNP. Comsec, you are directed to coordinate with the PNP with regards to the invitation to be sent to Miss Rizalina Rizalina Ustol. Comsec. Uh, Mr. Chairman, we have also invited, uh, this is the second invitation for Mr. Chito Manalak of Global Tech, Tirianang Bayan. What's the status, Comsec? We tried to locate this uh, person, sir, but um, we haven't uh, located, we haven't gotten his address. Uh, uh, to the Chair, can we direct the Comsec, Mr. Chairman, to coordinate with PCSO at the same time with General Torre? with regards to the invitation for Mr. Chito Manalak of Global Tech. Comsec, please comply. Yes, sir. And invitation for PDL Dondon, as mentioned by Kerwin Espinosa. Is uh, Dondon present? PDL Dondon. Comsec, what's... Have you sent an invitation for PDL Dondon? We course through that, sir, to the provincial... Uh, uh, the provincial warden. The, of Leyte. I, we are not yet certain we, if they have information on PDL Dondon. 
any representative from the provincial jail management in Leyte? Uh, present, sir. Ah, sir, warden. We have an invitation for a certain PDL Dundon. Good morning, Mr. Chair. A certain uh, PDL uh, Din Dundon Paler Palermo was already discharged from uh, our, our custody by virtue of a court order. So he was already released? Yes, Mr. Chair. When was that? And uh, perhaps uh, three years already, Mr. Chair. Well, anyway, to the Chair, once again, we direct uh, the Comsec to invite uh, PDL Dundon and get the full name of that PDL to, through the Warden of Provincial Jail Management, Penology in Leyte, and of course through to the PNP. Comsec, you are directed to comply with the request of Congressman Paduano. Yes, sir. Uh, with regards to uh, Espinosa siblings, the mother of Kerwin Espinosa, the sister of Kerwin Espinosa, uh, Linda Rosal, household cleaner, Landa Sumalag, the household cleaner, and Tessie Austria, household cleaner. Are they present in today's hearing? There is no um, information, sir, if they are around, but we have sent uh, the invitation to them. We carry it off. Uh, lawyers, yeah. To the lawyers. Yes, sir. Uh, to the chair, once again, please follow up this uh, with regards to the invitation of the next hearing for all these mentioned, all those mentioned names. Comsec, please comply. And lastly, a group of personalities mentioned by Police Colonel Garma, a certain Hermina Muking Espina, staff of Senator Bongo. Si Muking, and ito ba? Have you sent an invitation, Comsec? Yes, sir. And uh, Ms. Mooking has not presented herself, but we sent an invitation through the office of the senator. Uh, with that, Mr. Chairman, I move to issue a show cause order for Hermina Mooking Espina uh, for her absence in the day's hearing. So move, Mr. Chairman. There is a motion to issue a show cause order to Ms. Mooking. Uh, Ms. Er uh, Espina. Ms. Hermina Espina. Mooking Espina. And uh, to be so present in the next uh, committee hearing of the Quadcom, uh, Comsec, please comply. How about yes. uh, Mr. Peter Parongo? The same is true with uh, Mr. Parongo, sir. We tried to locate him. Unfortunately, there is no uh, address yet. Uh, once again, to the chair. Uh, yes, uh, General Tori. Uh, feedback, sir. Uh, we serve a letter to his residence at uh, Davao City. Uh, the letter was received by his wife, sir. Also, oh, since the, the letter was received in his residence and received by his wife, Mr. Chairman, and he's not present today, sir, I move to issue a so-called order for Mr. Romel uh, Parongo. To explain why he should be signed in contempt for the next hearing, Mr. Chairman. And there is, a, the next there so is a motion to issue a show cause order to Peter Paruno. Uh, Julie seconded. Are there any objections? Hearing none, the motion is carried. Uh, for Rumil Baktat. Comsec, for Rumil Baktat, we have also invited. Uh, we course through the invitation to the PNP, sir. Uh, we serve uh, the letter, sir, at. Uh, in his house in Turil, sir, Davao City, and uh, the letter was received by his son. Since uh, Mr. Romel Baktat is present in today's hearing without any explanation, Mr. Chairman, I move that we issue a cause order from Mr. Romel Baktat. There, so is, a, 
There is a motion to issue a show cause order to Mr. Romel Baktat. Romel Baktat. Julie seconded. Hearing no objection, the motion is carried. For invitation for Rodel Serbo. And through the PNP, sir. Yes, we delivered, uh, we delivered a letter to his known addresser, but the house is already abandoned. In Davao City, sir. So... We are again we looking received. for other addresses uh, for Mr. Uh, uh, Rodel Serbo, sir. And... Uh, We'll be giving feedback to this committee when... Thank you, uh, Gentore. Uh, once again, through the chair, uh, uh, to direct the ComSec to once again invite uh, Mr. Rodel Serbo on the next hearing. ComSec, please comply. How about Michael Palma? Sir, we... We... Sir, we brought the letter, the invitation letter, to his house in Mintal Davao City, and it was received by his housekeeper. And he has another registered address in uh, Island Garden City of Samal, and it was received by his previous living partner. And uh, we have uh, so delivered those letters, sir. Thank you, Jen Torre. Yeah, since Michael Palma is not present in today's hearing, I move that we issue a cause order for Michael Palma. So move, Mr. Chairman. There is a motion to issue a show cause order to Mr. Michael Palma for being absent. In our committee hearing today, Julie seconded. Are there any objections? Hearing none, motion is carried. How about uh, Lester Bergano? We have not found any address for Mr. Bergano at the moment, sir. We are still locating any known address. Sir. Uh, once again, Mr. Chairman, we will direct uh, ComSec to coordinate with the uh, uh, the PNP to once again invite a uh, certain Lester Bergano, Sumo Mr. Chairman. Comsec, please comply. And second to the last Mr. Chairman, isana po after this, uh, for Sunny Binabintura. We had uh, we had invited uh, the person, sir, and uh, it was personal received a person in his uh, residence in Barangay Peña Plata in Island Garden City of Samal, sir. Once again, Mr. Chairman, since he, Mr. Binaventura Rasani Binaventura received an uh, invitation letter to his residence, I move that we issue a cause order for Mr. Sani Binaventura. So move, Mr. Chairman. There is a motion to issue a show cause order to Mr. Sani Binaventura for failing to appear before this committee today. Uh, Julie seconded by Congresswoman Jinky Luistro, and hearing no objection, the motion is carried. And lastly, Mr. Chairman, we have received a letter coming from Attorney Martin Videlgra uh, representing uh, the former President, uh, Honorable Rodrigo Roa Duterte. But uh, we never, and the reason why uh, the former President will be excused in today's hearing because of uh, he needs more rest. He's, not, he's currently not feeling well and he's in need of much rest. So, Mr. Chairman, first and foremost, there is no an authority coming from the former president that uh, he will be represented by Attorney Martin V. Delarga, Delgra. And at the same time, no medical certificate confirming that indeed the former president will be excused in today's hearing because of his medical situation. If uh, I may, Your Honor, uh, as we all know, the former president is uh, already old and has been experiencing, uh, based on uh, media reports, has been uh, uh, sick lately and has actually uh, 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 had his medical uh, up, uh, I believe, and uh, I think uh, in deference to the former president, I think we should afford him uh, the courtesy that is due to him uh, by not uh, requiring him to submit to this committee a medical certificate. Uh, let us uh, uh, give him that uh, extension of our uh, courtesy to him being the former president, 
and uh, his intention to, to appear before this uh, committee in the subsequent hearings that we will schedule. So if I may, uh, Your Honor, uh, let us uh, not uh, pursue the submission of medical certificate from the former president. But Mr. Chairman, uh, under our rules, no, malinaw po, tradition, all resource persons being invited into, in every hearing, especially in, a, in inquiry in the AW legislation, we need for him to explain. And the issue here, Mr. Chairman, of course, Attorney Martin Delgra sent us a letter representing the president, former president, but with the, without an authority coming from the former president. Perhaps that and was the, just... Uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, we, we have, we have all the rules. I know, I know, Your Honor. And well, in but, fact, uh, during the previous just... hearings, well, in fact, during the hearing on public, uh, on dangerous ducks, twice we excused Attorney Fortun, representing supposedly Michael Young without any authority from Michael Young. And well, in fact, he presented us authority coming from his office to the corporation being listed. Well, Your Honor, if I Young. may, if I may, we're not, this, this representation is not asking for uh, uh, the former president not uh, to be excused in uh, not uh, following strictly the rules of the House. What, I'm, what, am I, what I am asking for, Your Honor, is the, uh, the request that uh, we should not ask or demand uh, a a medical certification coming from uh, the former president because we all know that he has reached an age of a fragile age. Therefore, uh, maybe we can uh, uh, grant that uh, exception to the former president. Sir so, Jeremy, uh, point Honor. of information. Uh, point of information. May what, I be allowed to say, uh, With the indulgence of uh, yes, Congressman uh, Paduano, what is the point of uh, information? Because uh, I haven't read yet. No, uh, I wanted to be clarified on something about the letter that was sent to us by the former president. Uh, it, was it included in the letter that um, uh, he is sick right now or he need more rest in order uh, to be a part of this, uh, no, I believe, uh, Your Honor, that the the lawyer uh, clearly stated in that letter that uh, he needs uh, rest. And the uh, chairman and, uh, Paduano is asking for a uh, medical certificate. The chair will, certificate. will allow me to read in toto, no part of that letter. He is currently not feeling well and is in need of much rest. But Mr. Chairman, once again. Let me, uh, first thing first, since uh, no authority coming from the former president to be represented by, Ms. by Attorney Martin Bidelgra, they have to produce. The committee should, uh, should uh, direct the former president to issue an authority for Mr. Attorney Martin Delgra, for him to be represented by this attorney. And uh, with regards to the medical certificate, Mr. Chairman, uh, of course, uh, for humanitarian and uh, giving due courtesy to the former president, I might yield to the position of the chair, but on the first issue with regards to authority coming from former president being represented, claimed by Attorney Martin Delgra, we have to, we have to get an authority from the president. Yes, the, uh, yeah. Attorney uh, Martin Delgra will represent him uh, on the next Patuano, hearing. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I believe that it was just perhaps a, an oversight no, from the part of uh, the lawyer because clearly in this letter, uh, he is representing the former president and uh, information as to the health of the former president was also stated in this letter. Therefore, uh, I believe that he has the imprimatur coming from the former Mr. president. Chair. That's the reason why maybe he wrote this letter. So, Mr. Chair. Chairman, uh, uh, lastly, Mr. Chairman, uh, with the indulgence of uh, uh, Congressman Flores, uh, of course, uh, let me again stress, Mr. Chairman, this is our tradition and under our rules. And if we do it, if we've done it, in regards to Attorney Fortun, a top-notch lawyer, and we excuse Attorney Fortun for not producing any substantial uh, document 
that he was given an authority from Michael Young. What's the difference between Attorney Martin Delgra and in the case of the former president? Well, and I think, uh, and I think, Mr. Chairman, kung talaga po, Mr. the former president give an authority to Attorney Martin Delgra, then they wrote us a letter. The former president should uh, send us a letter that indeed he's authorizing Attorney Martin Delgra to represent her. Him. One minute suspension.